butterflies in this video is going to be my recent buys which is sort of a book haul but not really a book haul so i have a couple of books that um it's like a book haul but it's not all books that i bought like right now some of these books are as old as i got them in december but i never incorporated them on my shelf i've just my book is in my shelf is in order from alphabetical order by author's last name I don't know if that's anal like is that is that too anal because I know some people organize their books by their shelves by color and it's cute to look at but I need my series to be together I can't have the first book over here and the third book all the way over there because I do have another shelf and I want to show y'all a picture of it because it's kind of cute it's I only have one shelf full which is about to change once I actually add these books in and usually when I start getting a lot of books I would just sit them on an empty shelf on top of each other before I start incorporating them because that way they all kept together for when I do do all and I don't have to go through and pick out the books on the shelf. It's too much work. So, it's a lot of books. So, the first, um, I think the first four books that I have are books that I got out of a fake crate. I did fake crate for four months. I'm still doing it, but I've been skipping the last couple of months just to try to be more uh, financially responsible. <sighs> And so I've been skipping the last couple of months. Fate Crate is a book. It's a book box. You get a book. You get, I think, like five bookish items in them. And one of them, one of the items that they put in every single box is like a snapshot photo of a book. Like I have like these really cute like pictures of like, like they have one from um, Children of Blood and Bone. And that wasn't the book in the box, but that's like a snapshot picture of Zaylee. And I can't remember what the lion name was that they had. But that's, it's so cute. Like, three of them, though, that I have, I don't, I never, I haven't read the book that they were, that they're from. But they're cute. Like, it's a cute way to decorate the shelf. And I have, like, a, like, a little photo line thing up there that I've been hanging them on. So, that's, that's why I want to take a picture of it and show you. It's so cute. But the first four books are out of those boxes. So, let's get to it. And I'll leave the link for Fave Crate down below. I'm not going to talk about it too much because it's not like a... I do want to get like another box and like do an unboxing video. Because all of the other ones that I got, I had the boxes sit on my shelf. Because like I should still go back and do a video and it never happened. But anyway, the first book that I have is The Weight of a Soul by Elizabeth Tammy. Okay, and all of the books that come in Fade Crate, they are Fade Crate exclusive covers. So that's why it looks like this. It's a Fade Crate exclusive cover. They come with a signed book plate by the author. So I have a signed book plate. They come with a note from the author, which I kept. Uh, like I think like the last two, I kept the notes in the books. The other ones, I think they're still in the box. And they also come with a bookmark so I have a couple of bookmarks from Fate Crate as well and just to let y'all know in advance I'm not even going to pretend to remember what any of these books are about so I'm going to be reading the description off the back of the book so you guys know what it's about because I'm not about to even waste my time and try to pretend like I remember because I don't so this book is about when Lena's younger sister Fresh is found dead their whole Viking clan mourns but it is Lena alone who never recovers Fresha is a sister who should have lived, and Lena cannot rest until she knows exactly what killed Fresha and why, and how to bring her back. She strikes a dark deal with Halo, the Norse goddess of death, and begins a new double life to save her sister. But as Lena gets closer to bringing Fresha back, she dredges up dangerous discoveries about her own family and finds herself in the middle of a devastating plan to spur Ragnarok, a deadly chain of events leading to total world destruction. Still with her sister's life in the balance, Lena is willing to risk it all. She's willing to kill. How far will she go before the darkness consumes her? So this is a Viking tale, and I don't think I've read a book about vikings like ever i think this is going to be like the first book that i've read that includes vikings so i'm kind of excited for this just because of that and the norse mythology kind of thing because i want to start like learning about different like the norse mythology and um like greece mythology i want to start learning about stuff like that i'm excited for this can't even tell you when i'm going to read it and i'm going to lie and say it's going to be soon because it may like it may not be then the next oh and these books are not in order i think i got this book before i got that one they just stacked okay so leave me alone <laughs> um the next book that i have is love struck by kate watson and this one also came with a signed book plate and a note from the author, which I'm keeping because I think they're like really cute. 
I, I did it did come with a bookmark but I think I put that up there in my other bookmarks already to be honest with you like I say I didn't keep them all together but this one is about 16 year old Cupid and training Kelly's in an Olympic sized mountain of trouble Rule number one in arrow toting matchmaking, don't stick yourself, but accidents happen, and Kelly instantly falls hard for her indie rock based playing target, Bencino. The god of love is going to kill her, even if he is her dad. Being a daughter of Eros, and I don't even know if I'm saying this right, isn't always cracked up to be. For one thing, a girl can get jaded when her parents have the most beautiful and fantastic love story in history. For another, immortality royally sucks when the oracle condemns you to eternity in the wrong profession. Do the gods care that Kelly wants to ditch the love stuff and be amused? No. They reclaim her heart and her, to reclaim her heart and her destiny, Kelly is left with no choice but to defy the guys, tempt the fates, date the mortal love of her life. So, yo, apparently my battery died. And, um, luckily I hadn't gotten too far because I know my camera stops recording after about maybe 30 minutes or so. So, I, I keep checking to know how long I was talking. And I happened to look and it was off when my battery was full before I started recording. And now all of a sudden it's dead. So, I switched batteries. And um, hopefully this one doesn't do the same thing because I had this one on the charger originally. Like I understand I haven't used my camera in a while, which is why I like I put one on the charger just in case that happened. Hopefully this one charged enough because fully charged when I just put it in. I was two books in after the last one before I realized. So backtracking, the next book that I had was Shadow Frost by Coco Ma, which I'm sure I saw on book two before. I don't know how much I saw it, but I'm pretty sure I saw it on book two, and I think I have the Kindle version on my Kindle I'm just not sure and I was asking because I want to do like a Kindle haul and show y'all all the books I have on my Kindle but what app do y'all use to like screen record like to record your screen while you're doing it because I think that'll be easier and more efficient than me trying to sit here and put pictures of every book that I say versus just going scrolling through the screen and you just see the screen that I'm looking at so let me know in the comments below what app you use or if that's something that specifically on a phone or whatever so Coco Ma <laughs> which I was showing that is the signed book plate and then the cute little author's note card that I have so in the kingdom of Hizaria darkness arises some call it a monster laying waste to the villagers in their home some say it's an, 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 an invulnerable demon summoned from the deepest abyss of the immortal realm many soldiers from the royal guard are sent out to hunt it down not one has ever returned when Astrid Fallenhart, Princess of Exaria and heir to the throne, discovers that she may hold the key to defeating the myster mysterious demon terrorizing her kingdom, she vows not to rest until the beast is slain. With the help of her friends and the power she wields, though, ha though she has yet to fully understand, Astrid sets out to complete a single task, the task that countless trained soldiers has failed, to kill it. But as they hunt for the demon, they unearth the plot to assassinate the princess herself instead. Astrid and her companions begin to wonder how much of their lives has been lies, especially when they realize that the center of the web of deceit might very well be themselves. When no one else turn, when no one else turns to, they are forced to decide just how much they're willing to sacrifice to protect the only world they have ever known. That is, if the demon doesn't get to them first. Like, I don't know, I'm like trying to be mad that I'm so upset because I already did this and I feel like I'm just repeating myself all over again. Gee. Okay, then the book that I had after that is The Never Tilting World by by Ren Shapiseo or Shipeko. I don't know how you pronounce your name. But this is her signed book plate, which I, I thought was cute because she drew on it. Like she added stars and the sun and the moon. I thought that was adorable. And then I love her note to the reader um, card because she drew on it as well. I'm, I'm guessing that's supposed to be like the characters that's in this book. And I like it. I thought it was so adorable. This one is about a world split between day and night. Remarkable in beauty and fearsome in power, generations of twin goddesses has long ruled Eon until 17 years ago when one sister's betrayal defied an ancient prophecy and split their world in two. The planet ceased to spin and three quarters of the world perished. Now a great abyss divides the planet. One side cloaked the perpetual night, the other scorched beneath the unrelenting sun. While one sister rules a rant, a frozen city surrounded by a storm-wrecked sea, her twin inhabits the sand-locked golden city. Each, go each goddess has raised a daughter and each goddess helps her own se keeps her own secret about the past. But when spectral forces summon those daughters to the side of the breaking, the two young goddesses, along with the powerful healer from Marant and a mouthy desert scavenger, set, set out on separate journeys across the treacherous wasteland, this desperate to heal their broken world, no matter the sacrifice it demands. In this book, out of all of them, maybe the book that I read first, because it seems like it's really one of those really adventurous, dramatic, like action-packed books. And that I'm excited to read. It kind of gives me vibes of like an ember in the ashes where you're going on this 
on this journey to this big ass secret and I'm excited so I think I might read this one out of all of them still when I don't know now I'm getting into the books that just have been miscellaneously bought <laughs> um not in a box just every here and there books and it's a few of them so this first book that I have here is Miracle Creek by Angie Kim and this I think is like a mystery novel I'm sure it's an adult and it's not a young adult but y'all know I read a little bit of everything so I'm not I don't only read YA I read across the spectrum and um I think I heard about this through this podcast that I have been listening to I think it's like all about books or something like that but I'll post that I'll post it below so y'all can find it and listen to it if y'all want. In a small town in Virginia a group of strangers come together at a special treatment center where they enter the miracle submarine an experimental chamber that may cure a range of conditions from infertility to autism. When the chamber explodes and two people die who is responsible? Was it the exhausted mother of a patient? The owners hoping to cash in on a big insurance payment and send their daughter to college? Because there's been a process of trying to prove that the treatment isn't safe. An ensuing murder trial uncovers unimaginable secrets and lies. Drawing on the author's own experiences as a former trial lawyer, Korean-American immigrant, and mother of a submarine patient, Miracle Creek pieces together the intense atmosphere of a courtroom drama and the complexities of family life. It is a powerful debut from an unforgettable new voice. So, I'm excited about this because it seems like a whole bunch of shit going on. I love a good mystery, piecing together a good crime novel. I'm excited and then it's kind of and then like I feel like the lawyer part of it all is going to be great because of her experience as a lawyer so I feel like it's not going to be like that shit ain't true you can't do that so that part of it I'm sure is going to be like a prominent part of it because that's her experience but Miracle Creek Gate ladies and gentlemen then this next book that I have is We Are Not Here To Be Bystanders by Linda Sarsour Sarsour but I found out about this book because I was looking at Dr. Phil one day and she was actually on the Dr. Phil show and she was talking about her new book. And the points that she was making when she was talking to this girl about comments that she made that were seen as racist. I was like, I need to read her book. Because I love the way that she, the way that she was speaking in such detail. It was like, you couldn't tell her she was wrong. Like you had, it's like, she's one of those people that when she speaks, you listen like even if you're not trying to listen you listen to her like I, like do y'all see understand what i'm saying like she just has that pull to like listen so i'm like i really wanted to get her book and read her because i think she have another book before there's another book or two but this is the book that had just came out that she was talking about on a chilly spring morning in brooklyn 19 year old linda stared at her reflection as she dressed in a hijab for the first time she saw in the mirror the person she was growing to be a young muslim american woman unapologetic in her faith and her activism who would discover her innate sense of justice in the aftermath of 9 11. now herald for her award-winning leadership of the women's march on washington Lin linda offers a poignant story of community and family and we are not here to be bystanders. From the Brooklyn bodega her father owned where she learned the real meaning of intersectional in, intersectionality to protest in the streets of Washington DC. Linda's experience as a daughter of a Palestine immigrants is a moving portrayal of what it means to find one's voice and use it for the good of others. We follow Linda as she learns the tenets of successful community organizing and through decades of fighting for racial, economic, gender, and social justice as she becomes one of the most recognized activists in the nation. We also see her honoring her grandmother's dying wish, protecting her children, building resilient friendships, and mentoring others even as she loses her first men mentor in a tragic accident. Throughout, she inspires readers to take action as she re reaffirms that we are not here to be bystanders. In his, pro, in, in his foreword to the book, Harry Belafonte writes of Linda, While we may not have made it to the promised land, my peers and I, my brothers and sisters in liberation, can rest easy that the future is in the hands of the leader like Linda, Sar Linda Sarsour. I have said, I've often said to Linda that she embodies the principle and purpose of another great Muslim leader, brother, Amer brother Malcolm X. This is her story. So, I loved watching her confront a person that swears that, oh, I didn't mean anything by it then. It wasn't racist and her breaking down to her, listen, this is why it's looked at as racist. Because of these comments that you're making, this is why. Point for point, it's like you could not tell her if she was wrong. Like, you ain't have a choice but to listen to her and be like, damn, maybe what I did say was racist. You know what I mean? I can't wait to read this, honestly. Then the next book I have is Let Me Hear a Rhyme by Tiffany D. Jackson, which I know I've seen on Booktube before all over the place. And this is another one of those books about um, 
black people being murdered and getting justice for it. This is set in Brooklyn 1998. So it's set in the 90s. It's not even today. Biggie Smalls was right. Things didn't change. But that doesn't mean Quadera and Jarnell are cool letting their best friend Steph's music lie forgotten under his bed after he's murdered. Not when his rhymes could turn any bad style corner into a party. Not after years of having each other backs. With the help of Steph's younger sister Jasmine, who is eager to seek justice for her brother, Quadera and Jarnell come up with a plan to promote Steph's music under a new rap name, The Architect. Soon, everyone wants a piece of him, but when his demo catches the attention of a hothead music label rep, the trio must race to prove Steph's talent from beyond the grave. As the pressure and danger of keeping their secret grows, Quadera, Jarnell, and Jasmine are forced to confront the truth about what happened to Steph. Only each has something different to hide. With everything riding on Steph's fame, they must decide what they stand for or lose all that they've worked so hard to hold on to, including each other. So, I think this book is going to be a quick page turner. It seems like this is going to be something that I'm going to fly through. And I really hope I enjoy it. Like, I really hope I enjoy it and I'm just not like, eh, about it. Because it do have this mysterious effect to it, but also some truth in it as well. So, so where you can compare it to what goes on nowadays. I don't think it's like a police brutality scene where a police officer killed him. I think it's just that he probably got murdered somewhere, wrong place, wrong time. But we will see. Then the next book that I have is Blood Air by um, Emily Wen Zhao. Okay. Don't start. Now this book is like I think at the beginning of last year when I did like my last video and I didn't know it was going to be my last video. I did say that I had some new things I wanted to bring to the channel, some new content, some new, you know, new ideas. This book was part of that. I wanted to do this new segment called Problematic Publications, where I would pick a problematic book, well, a book that's deemed problematic by the book community, and I would pick one of those books and add it to my CBR every month, and then come back and do a discussion on if I agree with if it was problematic or not, and compare to the things that people say was problematic about it to what I got from it. And this book was part of that. So I think when this book first was going to come out, you had people talking about, oh, she's trying to steal racism and, I mean, she's trying to steal slavery and market slavery as something for the Chinese people or some shit like that. It was, I saw it on Twitter and I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, black people were not the only people that were slaves. Like, I understand it's a big part of slavery. But you had other countries that was enslaved as well. And they ended up holding off publication from this book. And when it was supposed to come out, she pushed the release date back. And I was like, there was no way I would let anybody fucking tell me when the re it's getting released, whether you like it or not. Don't read it then. So this is going to be part of that. And I am going to start it up. I had already got a list of books down that I wanted to hit on. But I wanted to also get recommendations from you guys about what books you thought was problematic that I should probably talk about next. This is one of them, Carve the Mark is one of them, I have a list of books, Twilight is one of them, which I'm going to need y'all to get off Twilight, I will always be a Twilight fan, I will always be a Twilight, but it's some new stuff that I'm hearing now, that people are saying that Twilight is, it's a different discussion, and I'm just like, certain things I can see, like, okay, yeah, I can see that part, but that, girl, get the fuck out of here, I think some people are nitpicking on Twilight, but, that's a, that's a, that's a book for a different discussion, because I could talk about Twilight a video by itself, but, Blood Air is about a princess with a deadly gift, a con man with no past and no future, an empire spiraling into chaos, and it's time to choose a, a side. In this Krillian Empire, I'm not sure if I said that right, affinities are revealed. Their very gifts to control the world around them are unnatural, dangerous, and Anastasia Mikhailov, uh, the crown princess, has a secret. Her daily affinity to blood is her curse, and the reason she has lived her life hidden behind palace walls. When Anna's father, the empire, the empire is murdered, her world is shattered. Framed as his killer, Anna must flee the palace to save her life and to clear her name. She must find her father's murderer on her own, but Krillia, beyond the palace walls, is far different from the one she thought she knew. Corruption rules the land, a greater conspiracy has work, one that threatens the very balance of her world. And there is only one person corrupt enough to help Anna get to his core, Ramsden Quicktongue. A cunning crime lord from the Krillian underworld, Ramsden has sinister plans, though he might not, he might have met his match in Anna. Because in this story, in this story, the princess might be the most dangerous player of all. So, I'm still excited to read this book. And I can't wait to see if this is just one of those things that, which I'm sure it is, that people were just nitpicking about being overly sensitive about trying to find something to come at another author but I, I think it's one of those books honestly off top now when I start to read it 
If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure that that's what it is. The next book that I have is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. And I love the Poet X. Y'all know I love the Poet X. That is one of my favorites. I love hearing her do stand up, like doing the stand up poetry. Like, have y'all ever heard her do spoken word? Like, really just perform her poetry? Like, hearing her, which I want to go listen to the audiobook for Poet X because I know she is the one that narrates it. I love her voice. Like, her voice is like milk and honey. Oh my god! Like, y'all don't even understand. Like, I can't wait to read this book because I love the Poet X so much. I know I'm probably going to flip through this in one day just like I did Poet X because that was a one day book. And I think this is going to be another one. Now, this book, I'm about to say, I don't remember what this book is about, but I know it's Elizabeth Acevedo and I'm like, I'm getting it. I don't care what it's about. Ever since she got pregnant freshman year, Imani Santiago's life has been about making the tough decisions, doing what has to be done for her daughter and her abuela. The one place she can let all this go is in the kitchen, where she lets her hands tell her what to cook, listening to her intuition and adding a little something to magical every time, turning her food into straight up goodness. Even though she's always dreamed of working in the kitchen after she graduates, Imani knows that it's not worth her time to pursue the impossible. Yet, dis despite the rules she's made for her life and everyone else's rules, she refuses to play by. Once Imani starts cooking, her only choice is to let her talent break free. I cannot wait. Oh my god. I can't wait to read this and then her book that recently came out, what is it, Fresh Off the Boat or something like that? Something in that, y'all know what book I'm talking about though, but I want to read this one first. I'm trying to read them in order. So I bought this one after I read this one, then I'll buy the next one. And I hope I love this book. I think I'm going to love it just as much. Plus, I love the cover. She outdid herself. Like, this is adorable even without the book jacket. Like, I appreciate authors that do stuff like this. I really do. Okay, y'all, we're getting down to the bottom. We are at our last three books. Now, the next book that I have is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tommy and Amy. And I love Children of Blood and Bone. I'm trying to remember if I read that before I went on my hiatus or after. That might have been a book I read after. That might have been a book I read after I did my last video while I wasn't on book two. But I love Children of Blood and Bone. I listened to the audiobook and I read the physical book. I would listen to the audiobook while I was driving because I was spending so much time in the car. So I was like, I'll just listen to it. And then I would read it when I was sitting around at home. I love that book so much. I devoured that fucking book. So I can't wait to see how this world has changed now from the ending of the first book, how everything has changed. I can't wait to see how the world has changed and what's the new order of things how things are going on i cannot wait you can't really say too much about this book because it is the second book in the series so i can't wait these last two books that i have is books that i bought um from the library like way before this stuff happened from my original library home because i do still have a library card there too i will go i will swap back and forth okay from the book the library that i'm a part of now plus the library where i used to live and these are two of the books that i bought there i think they were like 50 cents for the hardback books and 25 for paperback so this book is in darkness by nick lake okay now, I don't remember what the, this one was about, but I like the cover, and at the time I read it, I was interested. So, Shorty is a Haitian boy trapped in the rubble of a hospital when an earthquake shatters the world around him. Surrounded by lifeless bodies and growing desperately weak from the lack of food and water, death seems imminent. Yet, as Shorty waits for a rescue that may never come, he becomes aware of another presence, one reaching out to him across 200 years of history. It is a man named Toussaint Louverture. The Haitian slave turned revolutionary leader whose life was marred by violence and whose own end came in darkness. As Shorty slips in and out of consciousness, seeds from his life and Tucson's plays back and entwine. And though separated by centuries, what this modern boy from the slums and the visionary black leader have in common will leave readers shivering long after the last page is turned. Still interested after reading that because I really didn't remember what it was about. But I'm still interested in this too because I feel like it's going to be emotional. Just because it's, it's going to be emotional, but this is also going to be a quick read. You see the, how full the pages are and how small the pages are. So, this is going to be exciting to read. This next book, I heard about this book a long time ago. Like, early book two. It was a long time ago that I heard about this book. But it was on my list to read and I forgot about it. And I see it and like, that sure does look familiar. And it is, by the time you read this, I'll be dead. By Julie Ann Peters. 
which I think is like a, I think this is like a suicide triggering book, suicide awareness book, honestly. So, Dana Rice is broken beyond repair, and after a string of botched suicide attempts, she's determined to get her death right. She starts visiting a website for completers, www.throughthelight.com. On the site, Dylan blogs about her life revealing a story of bullying that goes back to kindergarten, which is not on the web. Dylan's at her at her private girl's school where she's known as the freak who doesn't talk. Then a boy named Santana begins to sit with her at the school while she's waiting for her parents to pick her up. Even though she's made it clear that she wants to be left alone, Santana won't give up. It's too late for Dylan to be letting people enter her life, isn't it? So this book kind of reminds me of My Heart and Other Black Holes by Jen Wang. That's what that book, this kind of reminds gives me those vibes, but it's going to be shorter. So I don't know how quick it's going to get to that point. I don't know if she's going to change her mind or not. I'm not sure how it's going to plan out, but this is another book that I think is going to be pretty emotional and I'm pretty excited about. So that is all of the books that I have acquired over the last couple of months. Um, not including the book that I'm currently reading right now, which is uh, Becoming by Michelle Obama, which is somewhere with my bookmark in it. Because I started reading that when I told y'all, when I did my vlog. And I said that's the book I'm currently reading. So that book is also a book that I got around Christmas time that I've had on my shelf for a while that I just started reading because I was reading like library books and I'm kind of forced to read the books on my shelf now, which is not a bad thing. I just, I need to get through a lot of the books that's on my shelf. I have a shit ton of books on my shelf that I haven't touched besides putting them on my shelf. So uh, yeah, that is all of the books that I have today for you guys. Thank you guys for watching my video. Comment below if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned. If you think they were great. If you think they suck. Should I have high expectations for some of them? Should I not? Um, and let me know what books you guys have acquired recently. And yeah, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.